Hello everyone, uh, today we're going to be going over another example problem that pertains to utilizing the conservation of mass and the first law of thermodynamics for an open system. Now uh, for this particular problem we're going to be looking at a uh, counterflow heat exchanger in which we have hot oil exchanging heat with cold water, both which are in separate tubes but uh, counterflowing one another so that the hot oil is passing heat to our cold water to, to heat it up. Now this is actually a really interesting, very cool problem because it really uh, shows how important it is to appropriately select control volumes depending on what you want to look for in a problem, what you want to solve for in a problem. Now um, before we get into what we're looking for in this problem, let me just uh, talk about the this uh, figure here that I drew. Um, I've denoted the inlet and the outlet for the hot oil as 1 and 2 respectively. And I've also indicated the inlet and the outlet for cold water as 3 and 4. Okay, um, I've also gone ahead and listed all of the knowns that we have for our problem, so we know the specific heat of both oil and water. Note that I do not have a subscript for uh, constant pressure or constant volume for our specific heats. The reason being is since we ha are dealing with water and oil, we have incompressible substances. And as we know from lecture, that for an incompressible substance, the specific heat at constant volume and constant pressure are the same, and therefore we can just denote it as some specific heat C for that particular fluid. Um, we are also given uh, the temperatures at the inlet and the outlet for our hot oil, so T1 and T2, and we're also given the inlet uh, temperature of our cold water, T3. Uh, the problem also gives us um, the mass flow rate of both water and oil. In terms of assumptions, uh, as I was just talking about just a little bit earlier, um, we can go ahead and assume that we have an incompressible substance here, since we're dealing with hot oil and uh, water. Um, the problem also tells us that we can neglect uh, power, changes in kinetic energy, and changes in potential energy. And we also can assume that we have a steady state problem. Okay, so what are we looking for? So the question is, what is Q dot? So what is the heat transfer rate between the going from the hot oil to the cold water? And what is the outlet temperature of the cold water, T4? So this really comes into play as to how do we select our control volumes for this problem, especially finding Q dot. So let's go back to the figure. Now let's say we were to select our control volume to be the entire system. So that would include both the hot oil pipe and the cold water pipe. Since the control volume is now surrounding everything, we actually have no heat going moving across our control volume boundary. And therefore, if we were to go ahead and solve the first law of thermodynamics, we would not be allowed to include our Q dot term because there is actually no Q dot crossing our control volume. Now, here I have it such that we've selected the control volume to be just around the oil pipes. Now if we select the control volume to just be around the, the oil pipes, we will in fact have heat crossing our boundaries, our control volume boundaries, going from the hot oil pipe into the water, and therefore when we go ahead and apply the first law of thermodynamics to the hot oil pipe, we will actually be able to include that Q dot term. Now, so that's a very important um, uh, part of this problem is the, the control volume selection process. Uh, another reason why I have, in fact, selected the oil pipes is because um, we are given the inlet and the outlet temperatures, which we'll, we will need for the specific enthalpy when calculating the uh, Q dot, so our heat transfer rate going from the hot oil to the cold water. Okay, so um, hopefully um, that was uh, clear. Um, if, if anything I said was slightly confusing or anything like that, feel free to either uh, leave a comment below and I'll better explain it, or uh, you know come see me during lecture uh, before or after and I'd be more than happy to um, explain, um, explain that uh, more clearly if, if, um, if I wasn't clear enough. Okay, so... For finding Q dot, we've gone ahead and said, okay, we're going to select the hot oil pipes to be our control volume, so we can actually have that Q dot crossing our control volume boundary going from the hot oil pipe to the cold water pipe. So let's go ahead and write that. So, so for finding Q 
dot. We select the hot oil pipe to be our control volume. CV just denoting control volume. So let's first let's uh, go ahead and apply the conservation of mass to our hot oil pipe control volume. So you get DMCV dt is equal to m dot inlet minus m dot exit. We have a steady problem, so our DMCV dt goes away, and we're told by conservation of mass that the inlet and the exit mass flow rates are equal for our hot oil pipe. So that's m.1 is equal to m.2, which is just equal to m.0. Subscript O denoting the mass flow rate for, or, uh, bleh, sorry, the mass flow rate for oil. Okay, now let's go ahead and apply the first law of thermodynamics for an open system. So we get DE CV DT. <clears throat> is equal to q dot minus w dot plus our inlet mass flow rate times enthalpy plus or specific enthalpy plus one half v squared plus gz evaluated at our inlet minus m dot exit uh, times our specific enthalpy plus one half v squared plus gz evaluated at our exit. So going back to our assumption, uh, bleh, <laughs> having trouble speaking, don't mind me. Um, so in our assumptions, we've already gone ahead and assumed that we have a steady state problem, therefore our DECVDT term can be neglected. We've also said that we have no power entering or exiting our control volume, so our W dot goes away. And we have no change in our potential and our kinetic energy. So those terms drop out as well. So what that leaves us with is Q dot plus m dot 1 h1 minus m dot 2 h2. Now Applying what we know from step number one, from the, the conservation of mass, we can rewrite this as q dot plus m dot oil times the difference in our specific enthalpies. Now let's go ahead and solve this for q dot. So we get q dot is equal to m dot oil h2 minus h1. And now we can rewrite the change in specific enthalpy in terms of uh, our specific heat for oil times our temperature difference. So we can rewrite this as C oil delta T. So we get M dot oil C oil T2 minus T1. And now all of these we know. So let's go ahead and plug them in and see what we get for our Q dot. So for our M dot oil, we have two kilograms per second. For our specific heat for oil, we get 2.2 kilojoules per kilogram in Kelvin. And for our temperature difference, we get 40 degrees C minus 150 degrees C. Now here you might be saying, hey, why are you using degrees C? Well here I'm actually just using an identity um, that I uh, that we discussed a little bit earlier in the, in the semester when we were talking about uh, temperatures and our temperature scales. And here we know that the change in temperature in degrees Celsius is actually just exactly equal to the change in temperature in Kelvin. So that's all I'm doing. It's just a very simple trick to reduce one step, um, which would be a temperature conversion from Celsius to Kelvin, 
since it doesn't matter when you're taking a difference, um, I'm just going to go ahead and, and utilize this identity to, to be able to skip a step. Okay, so when we go ahead and plug that into um, our calculator and, and go ahead and solve, what we end up getting is minus 484 kilowatts. Let me redraw that box. Okay, so we get our Q dot is equal to minus 484 kilowatts. Now, one thing to note is that when uh, looking at the units here, we have kilograms canceling. Since the change in temperature between Celsius and Kelvin are the same, our Kelvin here will cancel out because, uh, because of our identity and the fact that both will, both the change in temperature for Celsius and Kelvin will be the same. So we have kilograms and Kelvin cancel out. And we're just left with kilojoules divided by seconds, which would be kilowatts. So when we go ahead and, and calculate this, we're in fact calculating our Q dot in terms of kilowatts. So I just I just wanted to make that make that clear. I didn't want um, any any uh, confusion. So we have minus 484 kilowatts. The negative sign indicates that we actually have heat leaving our system as we expect. So we have heat leaving our hot water pipes going to our cold water pipes. And that's exactly what we physically expect. Okay. So now our second part of our question is we want to find out T4. We want to find the outlet temperature of our cold water pipe. So in order to do this, we need to select a new control volume. The reason being is uh, one one's uh, fairly clear uh, the fact that if we have just our hot oil pipe uh, selected as our control volume, we actually cannot find T4 since it's not present in our actual control volume. Um, so um, if we go back to our drawing up here, we can actually solve for the temperature T4 in two different ways. Uh, one way we can we can select the uh, entire system as being our control volume, so we would include not only the hot oil pipe and but also the cold water pipe in our control volume, and we can solve it that way. Or what we can do is we can just select the cold water pipe as being our control volume, and that's and that's the way that I'm going to solve this. Um, but both will yield the exact same answers. So for our second step, we're going to select our cold water pipe as being our control volume and that's indicated by the uh, hi uh, pink highlighter okay so to find T4 We select the cold water pipe as our control volume. So now let's go ahead and follow the exact same steps that we did in, in uh, parts one and two. So we're going to apply the conservation of mass to our new control volume. Then we're also going to apply the first law of thermodynamics for an open system to our control volume, our, our new cold water pipe control volume. Okay, so we have DMCV dt is equal to m dot inlet minus m dot exit. This tells us that our inlet and our exit mass flow rates are exactly the same for our cold water pipe, so we get m dot 3 is equal to m dot 4 which is just equal to m dot sub w, which is just indicating water. Now let's go ahead and apply our first law of thermodynamics for an open system to our new control volume. So you get de cv dt is equal to q dot minus 
w dot plus m dot inlet times our specific enthalpy plus one half v squared plus gz evaluated at our inlet minus m dot exit h plus one half v squared plus gz evaluated our exit. Okay, so we already know we can remove our DECVDT because we've assumed steady state. We have no power coming in or out of our control volume, so that can be neglected as well. And we can also neglect changes in our kinetic and potential energy. So again, this leaves us with 0 is equal to Q dot plus M dot 3 H3 minus M dot 4 H4. Now utilizing what we know from conservation of mass from uh, step 3, we can rewrite this as Q dot plus M dot water H3 minus H4 then replacing our change in specific enthalpy with specific heat for water times our temperature difference T3 minus T4 we can again rewrite our expression as Q dot plus M dot water C water times our temperature difference T3 minus T4 Okay, so in solving this, we're going to get minus Q dot divided by M dot water, C water is equal to T3 minus T4. So we get that T4 is equal to T3 plus Q dot divided by M dot water, C water. So now let's go ahead and plug in all of our values. We know T3, we know Q dot, we also know the mass flow rate for water, and we also know the specific heat of water, uh, the specific heat for water. So now we can find T4. So we have 22 degrees C plus 273.15. So here we do have to convert into Kelvin because we're not taking a difference. Plus 484 kilowatts divided by our mass flow rate for water which is 1.5 kilograms per second divided by or uh, times 4.18 kilojoules per kilogram in Kelvin and I'm going to talk about why this is positive in just a second um, but I do want to talk about units so if we look at our units, our kilograms are going to cancel out. And then we have kilojoules per second per Kelvin. The kilojoules per second is kilowatts, which means that we have kilowatts canceling out. We have 1 divided by 1 over Kelvin, which would mean that we just have Kelvin in this resulting term, which is the same as what we have here. So our entire expression will yield Kelvin as our units. Okay, so why positive 484 kilowatts. This all has to do as to with our complete change in our control volume. So when we had our hot pipe or our hot oil pipe selected as our control volume, we actually had the Q dot. So we had heat transfer rate leaving our hot oil going to the cold water with that particular control volume. Now with this particular portion of the problem, we've reselected our control volume to be the cold water pipe. Now if we look at it from the reference point of our cold water pipe, we now actually have heat going from the hot water or the hot oil pipe coming into the cold water pipe, which means we're actually putting heat into our system. And since we have heat coming into our control volume, it has to be positive. Just by our engineering convention that we established when we first started uh, thermodynamics. So that's why we have a positive 484 kilowatts. It's because we since we changed our control volume 
to the cold water pipes, we actually have heat transfer rate into our system, and therefore it has to be positive. Okay, so when we plug all of this in into our calculators, we get that our outlet temperature for the water is 372.3 Kelvin. And that is our final answer for both uh, the Q dot as well as T4. So uh, hopefully, um, actually, uh, before I end, I just want to just a uh, quick note again that if you were to, and this is a great exercise, so I, I do recommend that you do it, that if you were to select the control volume as being the entire um, system, so both the hot oil and the cold water pipes, you would actually find that you would have no Q dot because you actually have no Q dot crossing your control volume, but you would have to um, account for two inlets and two outlets for um, your both your conservation of mass and your uh, and applying the first law of thermodynamics for an open system. So just just be aware of that. Um, and, but you will yield the exact same answer that we yielded down here, which is the 372.3 Kelvin for T4. Okay, so uh, hopefully this was a uh, helpful video. Um, if you have any comments or questions regarding anything I said or if anything that I said wasn't clear, uh, feel free to comment and I will do my best to um, explain it in a much better way. Um, uh, again, you know, thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful and I will see you next time.